Both Texas men's and women's basketball go 0-2 on the week, but UT baseball takes two of three in the weekend series, and multiple Big 12 Conference championships are won across Texas athletics. All of this and more on College Press. Good evening, everyone. Happy to have you with us on this Monday night. I'm your host, Nick Kuholtz. And while it was quite a range of success throughout this week in Texas sports, many teams came out victorious, while others, quite the opposite. Head coach Shaka Smart has had a rough season in his second year as head coach of the Texas Longhorns men basketball team and facing two of the top teams in the Big 12 Conference this week didn't make things any easier on him or his team. After a 15 point loss to West Virginia on Monday night, the Horns met the Kansas Jayhawks on Saturday. Let's head to the Frank Irwin Center for the highlights. The Kansas Jayhawks come in with at least a share of the conference title. Can Bell Self's team win it outright? Coach Sox Smart and the Horns looking to prevent that from happening on their home court. Kerwin Roach's pass goes off two Kansas defenders. Jared Allen, throw it down, big fella. The true freshman making an impact early on. Kerwin Roach in transition finds guess who? Allen again, the sophomore point guard loving his connection with the 6'11 freshman center. Texas with the early lead headed into the U-12 timeout in the first half, but right out of the gate, Kansas junior forward Dwight Colby grabbing the offensive board, slamming it down, sparking the Jayhawks offense as much as he can. Devontae Graham now to Josh Jackson who finds Landon Lucas. It's a dunk fest at the Frank Orwin Center. Kansas up big. Shaka Smart clearly frustrated with his team, specifically on the defensive side on the, of the ball, as are the Longhorns fans who start heading for the exits before the end of this one. You can see the Texas players clearly frustrated with themselves after their 19th loss of the season. Kansas wins this one 77-67. Our very own Nick Walters was at the drum on Saturday with more on the Texas loss to the Jayhawks. Kansas basketball strolled into the drum on Saturday, already having clinched its 13th straight Big 12 title. Texas outshot third-ranked Kansas and took the lead early for 35 seconds. Texas could not manage to hand the Jayhawks a hiccup as the Horns dropped their fifth straight, 77-67. You know, we were just too timid to start the game, but we, we, we didn't sustain that level of aggressiveness. You know, if you, if you want to win games like that, you, you have to go at people. Disappointed Texas fans in search of a reason for hope amidst a lost season should look no further than freshman forward Jared Allen. After securing his 11th double double, Allen stands out as the Longhorns' bright spot. Yeah, I mean Jared obviously played really well against them last time. I thought you know he was he was very active again tonight. Got a double double, and then the other thing is I think our guys have have realized that that's that's our best option on offense, and uh, they found him more. After turning down an offer from Kansas to learn under Shaka Smart, Allen has a knack for playing the Jayhawks. After a 22.19 rebound effort in his first visit to the Fog, Allen followed with today's 20.11 rebound performance. Kansas coach Bill Self sings high praise of his former recruit. I, I think he's great. You know, I, I thought when we were recruiting that he would be a great player. You know, whenever he comes out, I mean, this kid's a lottery pick. I mean, and he's got huge hands and. He's got touch. Uh, uh, I love his game, and I know other people do as well. The Horns sink to 10 and 19 on the season and rock bottom in Big 12 ranks. Ahead of the conference tournament, Texas has two more games to right the ship. From the Irwin Center, Nick Walters, College Press Box. Joining me now is basketball analyst Jonathan Palasic. Always good to have you on, my man. It's always good to be here. Jonathan, this Texas team is approaching its first 20 loss campaign since the 1982-83 season. I think a lot of people could have predicted some struggles from this Texas youth-filled team, but surely not to this extent. It's definitely a little, a little bit shocking. I mean, this Texas team was expected to struggle, like you said, but to this degree, I don't know. 
But one thing that you can kind of point to is this lack of upperclassmen leadership. You don't have the guys who can just rally the team when, a, when the opposing team makes a big run or steals the momentum from the game. They can't just, they have nobody to really gather the troops and right. kind of reverse that trend. Another thing is that Texas doesn't really have a true point guard. Kerwin Roach, he's more of a combo guard, and same thing with Andrew Jones. Um, Isaiah Taylor leaving early for the draft last year did not help Texas in anything. And so you could kind of see it in the Kansas game when Texas had nearly twice as many turnovers as they did assists. Well, now I want to move from this season to next year. The Texas Longhorns fan base overall, they understand it's a young team. The future seems to be very bright, room for growth and development. But looking at it closely, Jonathan, the two best players on this team are true freshman Andrew Jones and Jared Allen. There's a high possibility both of these guys leave for the NBA draft. Not saying it will, but if that were the case, let's say worst case scenario for Shaka Smart, Looking at next year, does Texas get any better if those two guys leave, or do you think this time next year they'll have the same problems they do now? I think Texas has to be a little bit better. You have guys who are growing up maturing. And another thing is they'll actually have a point guard, a pure point guard in Matt Coleman. He's, he'll be the guy who can dish the ball, who can basically see the court and see every little nook and cranny that he can try and fit a ball into to try and make easy, easy baskets. Another thing is this uh, development of team chemistry. The team is so young right now. So they haven't really had a whole lot of time to gel together and just basically know where everybody is on the court at all times. And one last thing is that Shaka Smart still needs to recruit players that fit his system. He likes to do havoc. He likes to have players press, full court press, and uh, try and create turnovers to lead, um, to lead into transition and easy buckets. They definitely have a lot to work on, Jonathan. Thanks for coming on. Of course. And while the men's team has been struggling throughout the entire season, the Longhorns women's basketball team has had some recent struggles themselves. TSTV's Ross Lebinski was at the Frank Irwin Center Friday night when they took on the Iowa State Cyclones. It's senior night at the drum, and the Texas women's basketball program were celebrating two of their most talented stars, Brianna Taylor and Kelsey Lang. The Longhorns were looking to break a two-game losing streak when they hosted the Iowa State Cyclones, but missed shots and suspect defense plagued the Longhorns as they fell by a final score of 70 to 66. We missed some easy shots too. I mean, it, you know, down the stretch, I thought we executed some things better. I just go back to the fact that we, we kept giving them easier shots than we were having to take. So I think when people leave you wide open, it kind of messes with your head. Um, I think, like Coach said, you know, it's going to have to start in practice. Texas looks to rebound from a tough loss tonight by traveling to the Little Apple to play Big 12 foe Kansas State in both teams' final game of the Big 12 regular season. Well, I think you always um, are disappointed when it's senior night and you don't you know, take care of your business and um, win your last home game. I, I think that's always a, a disappointing loss. Haven't had very many of those, honestly, in my career. I think that we have gotten comfortable with, with doing some of the things that we did really well during the middle of the season, and I think we can definitely learn from it, and if we can learn from it, then <laughs> you know we can move on and grow. And grow they will have to if they still wish to host part of the NCAA tournament here in Austin, Texas. Ross Lebinski, College Press Box. With me now is women's basketball analyst Mackenzie Palmer. How are you tonight? Doing so good tonight. Good, Mackenzie. Good to have you on. I want to ask you first about what's been going on with Coach Karen Aston's team. They won their first 14 Big 12 games. They've now lost their last three. What's been the reason for their late struggles? Exactly. Simply put, Nick, I'm going to say that they have lost their momentum. Last week against Baylor, they led throughout the first half. They even led in the fourth quarter throughout all three of their last losses. But somehow they allowed Baylor in Iowa State to creep back into the game and win in the final moments. I think senior center guard Kelsey Ling said it best. They have gotten too comfortable with some of the things that they did really well early in the season. And that, that is the reason why they have lost three straight games at the end of the regular season. I think that if they can gain their momentum back and strategize new ways to have elements of surprise, that they will be able to be a top team and um, be able to be a contender against Kansas State tonight. Yep, it's their final game of exactly. this season. Before this past week, these two losses happened. Texas, they, people thought they could be a Final Four team, possibly a chance to win the Big 12 Conference Tournament. 
Does what you saw this past week have any effect in your mind of how far these Lady Horns can go in the postseason? Exactly. It does make me question whether or not they can handle a Big 12 championship. I think fatigue and a sense of comfort has really affected this team this season. But I think it is important to not forget that this team was very good early on in the regular season, and they are a good team. I just think, like I said, they need to gain their momentum back. I think so, too. Well, thanks for coming on. Always appreciate thanks. the insight. When we return, we'll take a look at many other sports news around the 40 acres. Stay with us. Welcome back to College Press Box. I'm now joined by Hannah Nevlude. Hannah, not the ideal week for either men's or women's basketball. You know, that's right. It's getting harder and harder to watch Texas sports, but hopefully this team can turn it around. Yeah, they don't have a lot of time to do so. But while the basketball team struggled in their matchups this past week, many other sports teams here on campus have had their fair share of success. The Texas men's tennis team faced off with Wichita State on Friday afternoon. The 7th ranked Horns defeated the Shockers 6-1, improving their overall season record to 12-2. Track and field set the tone early this weekend, with the men's track and field team winning their 8th Big 12 Indoor Championship this weekend in Iowa, after losing last year to Oklahoma State by one point. Girls who could have gotten the four-peat this weekend competed without pole vaulter, Callie Long, who is out with a punctured lung. They unfortunately fell short and finished runner-up to Baylor. It was quite a busy weekend for the Texas softball team as they were in action at the Mary Nutter Classic in Cathedral City, California. Starting Thursday, ending on <laughs> Sunday, the Burnt Orange had six games in just a four-day span. The Longhorns won four of the six, two of those against top 20 teams. Texas is now 11-5 on the season. Moving into baseball this weekend, they had a series against UConn at the Dish. Starting off bottom of the fourth, Casey Clements hits a bomb to right field. Cantu had a double earlier on in the inning, so he got to score. Clements had the two-run home run in the bottom of the fourth for Texas. Moving to bottom of the sixth, Casey again with the solo home run. It's his second home run of the game. It's the first multi-home run since May 2015 against Baylor by C.J. Hinojosa. Texas takes that game 4-1 against UConn. Moving on to game two on Saturday, top of the six for UConn, Isaac Feldstein, left center field, drops it in the gap, hits a double, UConn battling back to get a two RBI in the top of the sixth. Bottom of the ninth for Texas, Travis Jones single up the middle, Tate Shaw actually gets to score, but this was not enough to get the Longhorn victory. Texas left two runners on to end the game, and UConn took the game 2-1 on Saturday. Moving on to game three on Sunday, bottom of the first to start things off for Texas, Ryan Reynolds bounces it off the bullpen tent. UConn left fielder plays it. David Hamilton scrambles in to score. Pierce comes out and argues that that's a home run. So Reynolds gets to come around and score to get a two-run home run for Texas in the bottom of the first. Moving on to bottom of the third. Clemens up to bat, drops it into right center field. UConn players struggling to get that ball in. Meanwhile, Clemens is coming around, gets on second. Reynolds dives into home plate, gets to score. Texas wins 9-3 against UConn and takes the series 2-1. We now go to Jonathan Palaszczuk for more details about this weekend for Texas baseball. Pitcher Jake McKenzie came in early for relief on Sunday and wanted to prove that his last outing was just an aberration. He showed just how quickly he was able to bounce back by coming in and not giving up a single run when it looked like UConn was on the verge of taking over the game in the early stages. This weekend was defined by strong pitching led by Jake McKenzie and a huge offensive output led by Casey Clemens and Ryan Reynolds in their home runs over the weekend. Actually, we love the power out, uh, outlet, uh, 
uh, explosion. But the thing what we want to do is be able to score multiple ways. And I think, you know, we had a hit and run today that we advanced. We did some things today that uh, created. Um, we were able to have Casey come up with a big sack bunt that turned into a base hit drag bunt. And then Michael advances him over. But two out hits were important as well. Head coach David Pierce talked about wanting his offense to score in multiple ways, and his offense didn't disappoint with Ryan Reynolds launching a three-run home run at the beginning of the game, Zane Gerwitz looping balls into the outfield, and Casey Clemens doing everything from hitting line drives to laying down a sacrifice bunt to lead the Longhorns to a 9-3 victory over UConn on Sunday. I'm Jonathan Palasik, College Press Box. A big series for the baseball team, no doubt, but it was a monster weekend for the Texas men's swimming team. Our very own Jessica Robinson, who will be joining us on the show later, has more on this past weekend's Big 12 championship. Overcoming adversity from last summer, where he missed the Olympics by .14 of a second, Will Lacone is back and proving himself, making a splash at the Big 12 championship, breaking the meet record, defending his Big 12 title, and receiving a swimmer of the meet. I want to be able to show people, hey, I'm not done yet. I mean, it's not what I wanted on the outcome this past summer, but I just kind of wanted to let one rip tonight. You know, no race is easy. I mean, nothing hurts. I mean, if it doesn't hurt, I feel like you're not really trying enough. So just kind of wanted to see what I could throw down right now, and I'm pretty pleased with that. The Texas men's team is home to four Rio Olympians, Joseph Schooling, Townley Haas, Clark Smith, and Jack Conger. Over these past four days, these men proved that their post-Olympic slump is over, clinching the Big 12 championship. Jack could go close to 19 flat, but we didn't see him going that fast, way beyond our expectations. And I'm a dreamer. I didn't dream that one. Texas junior Jonathan Roberts won his second straight Big 12 title in the 400 IM. Third year here, uh, so I'm really honed in on it, everything, and I've really bought into the tradition and the program, and it's awesome to see, you know, all my hard work uh, turn into some good results. This marks head coach Eddie Reese's 38th consecutive conference championship with Reese consistently attracting the top talent to Texas. It just goes back to the guys he recruits. Um, we all buy into a system in this program here. And having everyone around us that wants to excel at such a high level kind of makes everything easier for us. He's going to bring in some really good swimmers, but I think the thing that sets all these guys apart that are on this team are you know the level of character and leadership qualities that they have. When the gun goes off, cannot make them be tough. We cannot make them make the right decisions. They did that. The credit goes to them. Texas trains over the next four weeks in hopes to win their third consecutive NCAA championship. Jessica Robinson, College Press Box. A truly incredible story about how much success Coach Eddie Reese and this program has had. And Hannah, thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me, Nick. Always a pleasure. When we return, Jessica Robinson will now be with us in the studio, and she'll be joined by Emily Stone for some sports news outside of Austin, Texas. We'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome back to College Press Box's Unhooked segment. I'm Jessica Robinson alongside Emily Stone. Get ready for a spicy update from this weekend in sports outside of the 40 Acres. Jessica, Kansas had a very spicy weekend after clinching their 13th Big 12 championship. Sorry, Texas. Soaring to the top of the polls. And Gonzaga was just not spicy enough. They fell to the unranked BYU Cougars. For, and, you know, Jessica, this is the third straight game in Spokane that... You know, Gonzaga's lost to the Cougars, and um, they're still, you know, Gonzaga's still not okay. They're doing okay. They're going to be fine. They'll all be good. They're still top ranked seed going into the playoffs, but they did lose their perfect record this weekend, and that is okay. Because, because they're still at the top. They're still at the top. They're still there going to go. the tournament, so that's all good. They just needed a little bit more spice. <laughs> We're missing the spice, missing but good the spice. for them, it's still at the top. It's all good. <laughs> well, you've seen baseball game proposals, basketball game proposals, football game proposals, hockey game proposals. The list goes on, but all of them are on a huge stage facing massive rejection. But this Saturday's senior night at Indiana featured a new proposal story. Senior basketball player Colin Hartman pulled a nice surprise in his postgame win over Northwestern 62 to 63. Hartman called his cheerleader girlfriend up and popped the question, will you marry me? She said yes. 
No rejection there. So now, Emily, question for you. What is your ideal sport proposal? I think bowling would be kind of fun. Maybe bowl, golf? Bowl, golf? I don't know, you know? I like golf. It, it, could be, it could be any type of question, just as long as, you know, it's a good guy asking the question. Yeah. It'll be all good. But, you know, Jessica, speaking of questions, the Fayetteville police probably have some for Baker Mayfield. The OU quarterback was arrested this weekend for public intoxication, resisting arrest, and attempting to flee. Last season, Mayfield was sacked 18 times on the field, and he's been sacked once in the offseason by a Fayetteville officer. Wow, Baker. <laughs> well, on the brighter side of football, a quarterback who's actually going somewhere in life has switched sports and is now in spring training. Two-time national champion and Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow recently started Mets spring training. Let's check it out. I drive in the back and I go get my uniform on. I get stretched. I just got done with the core workout and I'm going to go get ready for practice here in a minute. And, you know, I just kind of focus on what I can control and my attitude, my effort, my focus, and um, trying to get better every single day. And uh, I'm not going to worry about, you know, what everyone's writing or what everybody's thinking or however I'm being marketed. I think for me, um, I just want to be able to continue the process, enjoy the process, enjoy every day, get to know my teammates, and, you know, have fun out there. Seems like Tim Tebow can do it all in football and baseball. All right, when College Press Box returns, Nick closes with what to look forward to this coming weekend in Longhorn Sports. Stick around. We'll be right back. For a final time tonight, we welcome you back to College Press Box. Let's take a look and see which Texas teams are in action this week. Again, women's hoops travel to Manhattan tonight. Baseball is on Longhorn Network tomorrow night against Lamar. And men's basketball heads to Lubbock on Wednesday evening to meet the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Thursday through Sunday, the baseball team heads to California for a four-game series against Stanford. Friday, the women's basketball team begins their run at a Big 12 tournament championship. And men's basketball completes their regular season against the Baylor Bears. That's all for this week's episode of College Press Box. Once again, we thank you for joining us tonight. On Wednesday, be sure to check out our sister show, College Crossfire, at 9 o'clock. And follow us on social media at TSTV Sports for the Longhorns' latest athletic coverage. For all of us here in the studio, Master Control Room, and on behalf of our always wonderful director and executive producer, Alyssa Killebrew, glad to have all of you with us tonight. Enjoy the rest of your Monday evening. We'll see you next week.